Hey, Woodstock Community Church, Pastor Brian here on this Tuesday, December 13th. And uh, as I'm sitting in my office, uh, it's, it's uh, not quite afternoon yet. Uh, it's been quiet here all morning and uh, just been missing some interactions with people coming in and out of the office and, and thought, you know what, uh, as, as I hear branches snapping and falling all around uh, today, uh, hopefully many of you have found yourself at home. Uh, hopefully many of you that have kids are, are able to be at home with your kids today. I know many of you are trying to take care of livestock, and some of you have to be out on the roads because of your jobs today. Wherever you're at, I'm hoping that you're safe and, and doing well. And and uh, as I've been spending a little time reflecting uh, this morning, uh, there, there, there's been kind of this uh, this pull uh, towards a, uh, maybe a little bit of a reflection as we count down to Christmas. And uh, this has been kind of burning for the last week or so, and uh, I just wanted to share it with you and, and thought maybe this would be an opportunity today as hopefully life has slowed down uh, to maybe really just center your hearts on, on what God is doing uh, during this very special time of the year. Our prayer is, uh, as leaders, that, that, that you're encountering the calm and bright in the midst of Christmas and, and, and maybe even in the midst of the inconvenience of an ice storm and snow on the way. Maybe you can take a few moments of reprieve and enjoy a little bit of calm, even though you might not be experiencing the, the bright. Uh, the reflection that I wanted to just share with you today comes from Matthew chapter 2, and it's actually uh, something that's been that's been tugging here a little bit uh, about the Magi. Of course, uh, we, we know about the wise men or the three kings or uh, you know, as kids, we, we learned about these these different things in our, our Christmas pageants, and and uh, I, I want to maybe pull on a few things that look a little different than maybe we've heard before. And so Matthew chapter two, if you just want to uh, reflect on on this as I read, um, starting in verse one of chapter two, it says this: After Jesus was born, so just remember, after Jesus was born, he'd already been born in Bethlehem in Judea um, during the time of King Herod, Magi. It would be either wise men or kings, uh, uh, scholarly folks, uh, came from the east to Jerusalem. And I'm going to just stop there for a moment. Uh, it is believed that, that the, these kings, these wise men, these magi, uh, traveled some 2,000 miles to arrive uh, in, in, in Israel, in Judea. And, uh, and so just imagine this. Now, now our pageantry in our minds, our Western way of looking at the nativity, believe that, uh, you know, or think or say that they came on camels. We don't know that. They could have been on horses. They could have been on donkeys. Uh, more than likely not on foot, but maybe. And, uh, and that they would have traveled uh, with, we know uh, from history and from Scripture, with a great deal of wealth. Um, that they, they traveled uh, more than likely uh, with, a, with a great entourage. And uh, because that's what they did in that period of time when kings went to different kingdoms, uh, whether it was on exploration trip or whether it was working on trade or, or for whatever reason, it would, would have been a large gathering. Uh, but here they've traveled some 2,000 miles to arrive in Jerusalem. They, they have had more than probably somewhere around 18 months of travel. Uh, for them to get here at great expense to themselves, not only physically, but emotionally. Uh, imagining that they would have been very weary, but finally, after, uh, uh, after this amount of travel, after they had seen this incredible uh, uh, cataclysmic uh, event take place where a star appeared that piqued their curiosity, what was this star there for? Being learned men, being astrologers in, in, in many ways, studying the stars, believing that the stars spoke of the greatness of, uh, of God, of something beyond themselves. They see this, this star that is out of the ordinary, captures their attention, and they go to uh, try to understand what this supernatural, unexplained event is all about. So if, if I were to put points to this, which I'm not going to, but maybe something to reflect on in that moment, is there something happening right now in your life or in the world around you where you're going, wait a minute, there's something more to this than just what's happening in the natural. There's something supernatural happening. But, you know, something's pointing to God, and, and maybe it's, it, 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 it's piquing your curiosity. And I would pray that you would step out in faith and follow after that. Seek after God. Uh, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Seek out 
those promptings in your heart where, where, where maybe you feel something stirring, something's out of the ordinary, something's calling you to step out in faith and do something maybe that you're not uh, accustomed to doing. I believe Christmas is the perfect time to do that. Here these wise men uh, went to seeking out what was this about, and they found some scrolls from a guy by the name of Daniel, a prophet by the name of Daniel, had written these hundreds of years before this event that there would be a star, that there would be a sign from the heaven of a great king that would be born that would save humanity. And this was what they were seeking after. Was this truly real? And, 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 and stepped out in faith, being led by this star, which led them over this almost 18-month period, it's believed, uh, to Jerusalem, to the capital city of, of, of Judah. They arrive here, and it says in, 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 in the last part of, of verse 1, excuse me, verse 2, and as they arrived, they asked, they asked questions. They asked questions, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star when it arose. This would have been months ago. It's been, it's been in the sky now for, for a great period of time. We saw his star arrive when it rose and have come to worship him. Think about it. they have no idea who this who this king is to be. They have no idea really about uh, this faith of the Jews. And yet they have come to seek and to to worship him because of what they have felt in their hearts and what they've seen be prompted of them. And they begin asking they're going through. The, I want you to picture this. They're going through the streets of Jerusalem asking people, where is this king? Where is this king? And they're not getting any answers. Reminder: Jesus has been born now for quite some time. I mean, he's 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 more than likely a year and a half old, a year to a year and a half old. They arrive. They're asking questions. Nobody seems to know what they're what what, what they're talking about. What king? What king are, are are you? And and they're they're going. We're here to worship him. Where's your king? Where's your king? And and they they can't seem to find out. And and so uh, verse three says, and when King Herod heard this. He was greatly disturbed. So King Herod receives news. Listen, this, this this parade of the Magi and their entourage entering into Jerusalem, you would not have been able to miss this. This caused quite a stir. Um, and, and as they begin coming in and people are going, what are you here for? They're going, we're here to worship your new king. And they're going, what are you talking about? And, and now Herod learns of this and, and so invites them in. And they, the, uh, the, the, the kings, the magi, ask, well, we're, we're here to worship the new, the new baby king. This causes Herod to be very disturbed. And it says it was not only him that was disturbed, but the people of the kingdom were disturbed as well at this news. Wait a minute, why are they disturbed? This was pointing to the, to the king that they had long been awaiting for, the Messiah that they had been waiting for and learning about, that they had been going to the synagogues or what we would refer to as church. They'd been learning about this Messiah coming for, for now centuries. This had been foretold already in the time of Abraham, and, and, and yet they have somehow missed it. And even as they, they see all of this happening around them, they're still missing the fact that a king has been born to them and they don't even know who he is or where he is. Maybe maybe that's your experience. Maybe even now at Christmas time, you're going, wait a minute. I see all these people get excited, but I've not encountered him. I, I don't even know what they're talking about. Maybe it's time to go searching. This is what Herod did. Herod went and, and he, he, he said here in verse 4 that he brought together uh, the people's priests and teachers of the law and asked the question, where is this one that is to be born? He knows that there's one that's been foretold, but now he wants to know details. And so now the pastors, if you will, the teachers, those theologians gather together and they go, oh, well, he's going to, you know, the prophets have foretold on a number of different accounts that he's going to be born uh, in, in the little town of Bethlehem, which is only five miles away from where they're sitting right at this point. Their king that they've been long awaiting is just going to be five miles away. And yet what happens is Herod is, uh, gives this information to the Magi that have traveled 2,000 miles to worship him and, 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 and say to them, go to, to, to Bethlehem, go find him, and once you find him, come tell us about it. Doesn't that just give, doesn't that just give you a little bit of a picture of, of kind of how we as Christians even still operate today? 
hey, when you when you go find this Jesus, you, you come tell me about him. I want to learn all about him. Instead of going and exploring for ourselves, instead of going and seeking out for themselves, why didn't Jerusalem empty out in that very moment? Why weren't people so excited to go worship the possibility of their newborn king, the Messiah, having come? Why didn't they empty out and go on a half-day journey with these kings to go find this new baby, this new king, this new Jesus? Why, why didn't they? And the question I would maybe challenge you with today is, are you searching him out? Are you seeking him out? You know, we have the, 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 this amazing book and uh, that we get to go and, and explore him. And yet, how many times do we not open the pages and go try to find him for ourselves? We want others to do it for us. We want the pastors or the teachers or the elders or, or, or some uh, street evangelist or, or somebody on YouTube uh, to explain it for us instead of going and, and mining out the treasures here for ourselves. I wonder, as you anticipate the, our next uh, several weeks of worshiping together as we go to, to Christmas, if, if, if maybe we could grab a hold of the spirit that the kings carried with them, this one of faith and wonderment, of, 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 of finding this new king and wanting to worship him, coming with their gifts and treasures. I wonder if we started thinking like those kings of going, I'm going to step out in faith. I'm going to go be very active in finding him out together with our church body, with, with brothers and sisters of like-mindedness. And let's, let's go seek him out. Let's go worship him because he's worthy. I wonder what that would look like if we came with a, uh, during this season with a, 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 a spirit of expectation of finding him when we come to worship. One, one maybe final thought to think about beyond ourselves. This might be a little bit raw, but bear with me and then ask the Spirit to process. You know, regardless, this time of year, whether you're a believer or, or, or not, there's something different in the atmosphere. People are wondering, they're searching, they're seeking something out. I know that there's a season of generosity. People act differently towards one another. There's almost this open invitation of inviting people over and and, uh, and and a deeper level of fellowshipping and maybe loving on mankind. And, and yet, for those that don't know Christ, there is this time of year always that question of what is Christmas all about? And we know it's not about Santa, and we know it's not just about gifts, and, and we know it's not about snowmen, and we know it's not just a, 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 you know about uh, all the things that we've made Christmas about, but it's about, it's about a king who came to earth to save us and rescue us. And the world's seeking that out. And I think that there's an open spirit in our in, in, in our culture, even at this point of time and in, in, in this time of year, where people are going, man, I, you know what? I think we can find that king. We can find that answer in the church. You know, they, they, they tell a story of something that's so different than what we've encountered with Rudolph and Santa. There's even people that come to church this time of year just seeking those things out. But my question is, is when they come through our doors in particular, or maybe you're watching this and you go to a different church, when they come to your church, or when you sense that seeking, how do you respond? When they're asking questions, where is your king? Who is your king? Do you go, hey, listen, you know what? Go find him. You can you can find him out in this word. You go explore that when you find him. Then let's have a conversation. Or are you willing to go, hey, let's go on a journey together. Let's explore this together. Let me tell you about the king that I've encountered and the journey that I've been on and the ways that I've traveled to find him and, and the mystery of faith that continues to be unraveled as I get to know him more. Let me show you the treasure that can be found in him. Is there a sense of excitement and wonderment of going, I want to take somebody along on this journey, even though I'm I might not know all of the answers, even though my faith might not be as strong as I want it to be. Are, are, are we open-minded enough and, and are we called on mission enough to be able to invite people to, to, to go and explore with us? That when they come to church on, on maybe Christmas uh, Eve or when they come this maybe this next Sunday, the, the 18th, as we have a number of special things that point to Christmas coming up, a uh, great opportunity to invite. Are, 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 we, are we excited? You know, here the kings came and they're asking questions in the streets and they're going to the palace courts and they're asking these questions and, and here they're finding people who aren't excited to worship but really more subdued, laid back, not excited even at the, the prospect that the Messiah 
has come. In fact, they're disturbed by it. What will an outsider encounter if they come to Woodstock Community Church this Sunday or Christmas Eve or in the weeks to come? What will they encounter as they search for the King? Will they encounter a bunch of people that are excited to worship? full of energy to worship a God that's so, a king who's so much bigger than themselves, bigger than we are, bigger than our minds can even pro process or, or handle, the one that has the answers to our brokenness, the one that's come to rescue. Do we come excited, and are we willing to share that excitement? My, my prayer is, is, I know this has gotten long, I hope you've been able to hold tight through this, that, that, that you'd look at those scriptures of the Magi and go, you know, how can we follow in their footsteps? How can we be sharing the good news of a king that's been born? And, and, and isn't it amazing that the ones that traveled the furthest were the ones that encountered the king? That those that were just a few miles away, those that were so close, those that had heard the truth their whole life and had been told to look for it, missed it. May we not miss it. And may those that come searching and seeking this time of year and all year long, may we not miss helping them find as we go on this expedition together church family we have a huge opportunity these next few weeks and in the weeks to come to be able to make an impact in our community and those that are searching and seeking i pray that you'd be faithful to step out in faith following after an amazing god who loves you and loves the world so much that he came and gave his only son let's tell the world that good news have a great day enjoy enjoy this time of calm and bright. In Jesus' name, amen.